Hi, this is Rob Waller from Business Loan Services and welcome to my Friday Business Finance Bulletin, a weekly roundup of news, tips, ideas and strategies on raising finance and dealing with banks. So what are we looking at this week? Well, we're going to be looking at that perennial problem of late payments, also going to be looking at some profit results in from one of the UK's leading challenger banks, and in my tip of the week, what is it the banks exactly want? So let's start off with late payment. Um, as we know, whenever I speak to businesses, I'm sure you may suffer from it as well, is late payment causes major problems, especially when it comes to planning for growth. Well, interesting survey out this week from the ACCA, which is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, and they looked at this issue of late payment, and they found out that small businesses are twice as likely to suffer from late payment problems than their larger corporates do. Now that's, that's not surprising because as we know as a small business you just don't have the leverage when it comes to getting money out of somebody whose purse is tightly closed. But whilst it causes cash flow problems it also causes a bigger issue as well in that of those small businesses surveyed many of them said late payment is stopping them taking on employees i.e. they're just concerned they're just not going to have the cash to pay wages and that's obviously worrying as we go into a period of growth. Um, also, another survey that I saw this week around late payments from BAX, which is the um, online payment provider. Um, they found out that 76% of small businesses say that it takes, on average, one month above their normal terms in order to get payment. Now, that's massive. So it does have an impact. But more importantly, again, that found from that survey from BAX was that 20% of directors said that they were forced to take a pay cut in order to preserve cash within the business. And also 23% said that that receipt, late receipt of money also meant that they could not pay their suppliers on time. So, as we've said in previous videos, you know, we've got to accept you may not have the leverage, but you've got to make sure you shout loud and shout clear. And at the end of the day, if your business is being put at risk by late payment, then you've seriously got to consider whether you actually want to do business with that larger one that's causing you cash flow problems. Right, challenger banks. Now, I mentioned in the last bulletin um, that I'd had a chat with one of the business development managers from Aldermore Bank. Well, as it happened, Aldermore Bank this week released their 2014 results and a very impressive performance. Uh, profit more than doubled on 2013, with them reporting a profit of £56 million. Um, their small business lending, that was significantly jumped up to just over £2 billion, and the deposits that they take from both business customers and personal customers also showed a massive jump as well. So it just shows they're beginning to make a major play into the small business lending market. So if you want to check out what Aldermore do, go along to their website, aldermore.co.uk, and there you'll see the range of commercial finance products that they've got from commercial mortgages, invoice discounting, asset finance, a whole host of facilities available there. Um, obviously, we're always available for a chat, and we know the people there in Aldermore, so feel free just to drop us an email at info at businessloanservices.co.uk if you want to talk a project through. Now, what about growth generally? I saw an interesting survey recently from Barclays um, that said that only about 25% of business owners have actually got a growth strategy in place. Now, what do we mean by growth strategy? Well, that's actually sitting down and planning ahead. And it's back to this whole thing about having a business plan about where you want to be and how you're going to get there. And in fact, that Barclays survey showed that only about 45% of businesses said that they have a business plan. Now, I'm surprised that the figure is that high. But if you're planning for growth, what should you be thinking about? Well, obviously, there's the cash flow implication. You know, growth does bring a cash requirement. You've got stock to buy, you've got new employees to come on board, um, you've got those late payments I've talked about just previously to, count, to factor in. So all of this needs cash. But not only that, it's the resources generally. I've mentioned you may need more staff. That needs planning. You may need additional plants and equipment. That needs planning. So when you're sitting down and thinking that you're going to enter um, a period of growth, just take advantage, sit back, plan ahead, and just think, what do I need in order to make sure that we can fully plan for growth and get there in the best way and not trip up along the way? Now, what about my business tip for this week? Well, early this week, uh, we started um, our six-monthly series of roadshows for Business Wales. Now, if you're based here in Wales, you know, Business Wales is a support organisation uh, for the Welsh Government. And uh, we go in periodically to run access to business finance workshops. Uh, so we did a series of two this week. We're also doing two next week as well. 
and um, it's all about, as the title suggests, access to business finance. And I was doing one uh, this week down in the West Wales College town of Lampeter. And uh, we're talking about crowdfunding and asset finance, invoice discounting, all of the growing range of alternative finances out there. And um, we touched upon high street banks and one of the delegates just asked, Rob, what is it exactly that banks want? Now, clearly he'd been knocked back and he was just a bit confused as to what banks look for these days. And do you, know, you can summarise it in a couple of things. Number one, experience and track record. You know, the banks are not that keen on lending to startups because um, that's one thing that you lack is experience and track record. So if you've been in a sector for 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it may be, you understand what the pitfalls are and that's a major tick in the box. Obviously, financial information, up-to-date audited accounts, management accounts. Ideally, financial forecasts as well. Cash flow, profit and loss, balance sheet forecast. All of this shows that you've sat down and worked out the financial implications of growth, as we talked about earlier. So what else do they need to see? Now, this is an important thing that many business owners don't understand. Um, your personal credit file. They want to see that and they want to see that it's clean. I know defaults, no county court judgments. Um, banks are really hot on this. Now, you may wonder, well, you know, my business is something separate from me personally. But in the small business market, you must remember you are the business. You are the one who will make it or break it. So the banks are very keen to see what your personal financial background is like. Because think about it this way. If you've got a personal financial problem, where are you going to turn to first? It's going to be your company, it's going to be your business, isn't it? And so um, inadvertently you may be putting your business under financial pressure by all the money you have to pull out from the business. And that's why the bank wants to see what your personal credit record is like. So, and the last thing they need, the business plan, just mentioned previously. They just want to see one document that encapsulates everything that they need to know about your business. So I hope that was of help. So that's it for this week. Um, thanks very much. As ever, I hope you enjoyed those brief tips that I've shared with you. If you do want to know more and you want to talk through any projects with myself or the Business Loan Services team, say just drop us an email, info at businessloanservices.co.uk or drop along to our website, www.businessloanservices.co.uk. That's it for this week. Thanks very much for being with me. I look forward to being with you again next Friday and have a great, successful and profitable week. Bye-bye now.